But let's do our final wrap-up and impressions, Chris. This is the 50th anniversary 2014 Mr. Olympia contest. Phil Heath is now the four-time Olympia champ, narrowly defeating Kai Green for certain, and Sean Roden for that matter. Um, who is the most impressive or the most improved bodybuilder in your mind of the night? Of the entire show? Or in, just in the, uh, two, uh, in the open men. Uh, that, that's hard to say. I mean, uh, when you get to a certain level like where he sat, it's not that easy to be much better than, than you have well, been. He wasn't the best he's ever been, he was he? He wasn't the best, but I don't think he was far off. And, and tonight, he probably was in the category that he was the last couple of years to win it. Uh, was Sean Roden the best, most improved, Chris, of yeah, the night? Unquestionably, he's the most improved bodybuilder yeah. of the night. Um, I mean, he, he improved from the Arnold uh, to, to here. He improved from last year to here. So... He you know, beat Dennis Wolf. He beat Dennis Wolf, which is a big, you know, important step for him because Dennis is the reigning uh, Arnold Classic champion, mm -hmm. and Dennis uh, Wolf was expected was third him, last year. Yeah, and he was expected to challenge here. So, you know, for 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 not only for uh, uh, Roden to be able to improve, but to be able to get the important first call up. Remember, there was only three in prejudging. The first sure. three that was like, the, the, you know, the judges drew essentially drew the line that these are the top three guys. Do you think the judges just, when they looked at Roden, they just said, you know, we can't give it to him. It, it, I, I, the, you the, know, the hype was so much for Kai and Phil, Kai and Phil, Kai and Phil, that was it, it, they just weren't ready, it seemed, to give it to a, a, you know, a third I, person. I, I think I, I agree with you. I think when you leave this show, the scuttlebutt would be, you know, the inside scoop would be, Sean, you are right on the edge, more so than Kai is right on the yeah, edge. Because even Jay Cutler said it, yeah, right? Yeah, he said he, you know, he was at prejudging and said that, uh, you know, he's right on Phil's tail. Albeit, he said Phil was very flat in prejudging for Phil, which I agree with. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it, it's, you, you know, I think he might be the guy who'd be chasing surprisingly next year, Phil more so than than Kai. Uh, Lonnie. Um Phil Heath, um, when we see the final scorecards, do you think the, the decision will be unanimous? Yes. And do, you, and do you think that Kai Green will get unanimous second place votes? That's even uh, something that I'm debating because I think that Roden was very close to him in prejudging. I'm going to say no, that second place was not unanimous. Uh, walking around the expo today, talking to a lot of fans, is getting their, their opinion. And boy, they were really high on Sean Roden. Just the, the beautiful shape. Uh, you know, he battled. We, we looked at that prejudging last night. He's going pose for pose with Phil Heath. Do you think that once Roden hits the European tour, I know Kai Green's going to be at a couple of the shows, that Roden could possibly, you know, walk away with a couple of victories? Almost like with the way Kevin Lavroni did, uh, you know, one year when he went over to Europe. I think it's going to be interesting to see how Kai responds to this loss. I don't really think you guys thought that Kai thought he was going to win, Phil thought he was going to win. I don't know if Kai really thought he was going to win. I don't know what George Farrell was telling him, but we're, we've seen this before, and we thought it may be real close, and the champion comes out with straight ones. Uh, that's going to be interesting. I'm going to keep a close eye on those, those European shows. I think Roden will probably stay in shape longer than Kai Green, and I'm going to go with Roden. Uh, for I those agree. wins. Will, will, will Kai self-destruct after this, or do you think he'll keep it together enough to, to, to compete well in Europe? I mean, I, I don't think he'll self-destruct. You know, I think he'll look good on, on the tour. I mean, he might look better on the tour, because, yeah. uh, I mean, I thought in prejudging that Kai Green was extremely flat for Kai Green, and if you're not sure, all you need to do is go back to Pittsburgh and see him look enormous, but not Mr. Olympia conditioning, but there's too much of a difference between Pittsburgh being 300 pounds and in good shape and whatever he weighs here. Yeah. The amount of weight that he's dropping, it's, it's not translating into that much improved condition. So maybe if he eats, who knows, he could improve on yeah. the tour. Or, you know, he might have water issues and just, you know, implode. What about Dennis Wolf? Can he be a guy who explodes on that tour yeah, if he Dennis fills is, out? I think Dennis is uh, very dangerous on the tour. Um you Although know, traveling, you know, some, in a lot of big guys, it dehydrates you. And he might have trouble staying full. You know, with these. Yeah. Remember, this is the first tour, Lonnie, that we've seen where we had not weeks apart, but days apart. We have Arnold Europe on Saturday. On Wednesday, the following 
Dubai. I will be there. And so with Johnny Styles. And then the following fr uh, Saturday, you have Prague. And then Sunday is San Marino. Oh, remember the, the old days, I mean, going back a couple decades? That's the way they used to do it. They had those like three or four shows in like a week. Yeah. So it's kind of going back to the old ways. So uh, I don't know. It's going to be tough. I, I think the three guys that we've talked about are obviously, I think you can go anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't, if I look at the results and I saw Sean Roden wins, I'm not surprised. If Kai Green wins, I'm not surprised. If Wolf wins, I'm not surprised. Is Dexter Jackson the most consistent bodybuilder in the history of the sport? Yeah, possibly. I think, I, I think he's the most consistent bodybuilder in to the history. To be able to do it so many years. I mean, we thought Sean Ray was consistent. Uh, he, how many years did he do the Olympia and place well, top five? He was in the top five 12 years, right. but most of the time Sean only did one show. Right. Dexter Jackson's done way more shows. And he's gone till 45 years of age. I yeah. mean, that's an impressive, you yeah. know, uh, I He'll guess be statistic. 45 in November, and uh, he's done like 70 pro shows and. I think it makes a difference. You notice how he's waited where he just did the uh, Olympia the last two years, how good he's looked. Well, I think now he's going to, you know, stretch it out a little bit. Yeah, well, and uh, I would say he's probably, because of the length of time that he stayed in the game, other people were retiring earlier. They're going longer now. I'd have to say the Blade's probably the most consistent of all time. Branch Warren finishes in the sixth-place spot after a ninth-place finish last year at the Olympia. He won the Dallas Europa Super Show. Obviously, he's, he's dealing, dealing with injuries. Uh, a good appearance from, you know, Branch's body does not look like it did a couple years back. Um, what, what's your recommendation with Branch? And did he deserve to beat Big Rami tonight? No, I don't think he deserved to beat Big Rami. Uh, I, I, I just struggled to make the justification for him. I mean, they're, they're both, you know, in decent condition. Neither are in great condition. Rami's got... An enormous amount of uh, more muscle than him, mm -hmm. more flow, better legs, mm -hmm. and that's his calling card. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, too convinced that Rami yeah. was, a, you know, I'm not the deserving winner of uh, place you know, six. You know what's interesting, Lonnie? Big Rami is the only competitor in the history of the Olympia that they use his nickname when they announce him for, for his final placing. You know, his name is Mamdou Elspayet. And I'm use it, too, if he ever does the Arnold, because I, how do you pronounce that? Mamdou Elspayet. Mamdou Elspayet. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Yeah, but you notice that? They actually called him Big well, Rami in seventh place. That's why. There's like, you know, it's hard to pronounce. I don't even know if he knows how to pronounce his name. Mm -hmm. It's tough, but I agree with Chris on that. Uh, you talked about the most improved. I guess you got to look at Branch Warren, too, in a sense, because he was ninth yeah, last year. I don't know about He was ninth. Everyone thought he was through. He came back and won a show, not the strongest show. Mm -hmm. And he did get six, whether we think he deserved it or not. He got six. He improved three places. Eighth place, Victor Martinez. If you're advising Victor Martinez what to do now, what, what do you suggest? Uh... You, to, you, that he he needs to he's he's too heavy here mm -hmm. he's too heavy here um which you know the danger is of course coming into a show like this it's it's easy to get trapped into i have to be bigger uh because there's a lot of big guys right uh but i think he still has the the flow to his body that at a lighter body weight when when his lower back is in his glutes and hams are in I think he would have moved way up in this lineup, hmm. you know. So I think he's just competing a little bit too heavy. Um, uh, so th the advice would be to come down and wait. The best, uh, youngest competitor in the lineup, Steve Kuklo, might be one of the most impressive upcomers, I guess you could say, in the sport. The new guys who are going to be the new guard eventually in five years from now. Uh, Lonnie, do you see him moving into the top six at some point in his career? Well, after being ninth this year, I think it's feasible uh, with, you know, the proper improvement uh, that I expect him to have. He's a smart guy, a, a fireman, you know, he trains hard. Uh, what being a fireman have to do about well, being a good body? He's a steady oh, guy because he's steady, you know, he's dedicated, you know, he, he's, he doesn't miss work, he's got a job. That, that's true, unusual. he does have a job, yeah. And he is a smart guy. I've known him for a lot of years. He used to expedite the Junior Cal, actually. I, I knew the Junior Cal was going to come back into did. this conversation somewhere. He actually did. He came in from Texas. With, mm -hmm. But I think, you know, he was sixth. It's easy to say, yeah, he could be in the – he was ninth. But can he be in the top six? I don't know. you got some people coming up next year. Uh, the Compton kid is awful good. Uh, 
What about the guy who won the North American? I think he's the youngest guy ever to turn pro. Dallas. The Carver never really proved. He, to, hasn't, he, hasn't, he hasn't, hasn't really fizzled. Out. No, he hasn't had that yet. But, you know, uh, Cedric McMillan, I, I, I really liked him after this year's Arnold. Cedric probably was the best guy not in this lineup, I would say. Would, yeah. would you agree with that, yeah, Chris? Sure, and sure. will we see him at the Arnold, obviously? Yeah, he'll be at the Arnold. Juan Morel finishes in that 10th place spot. Terrific accolade for him to finish in the top 10 at the Olympia. And I think that, you know, he's a guy who's we're going to see in the future, who's improving. You want to show this year at the Toronto Pro Show. He was a controversial second at Kuklo in, in Brazil. So, you know, here's a guy who's on the upswing as well. And I, I think that the talent pool of the Olympia this year was, was pretty good. You know, we didn't see the best Phil Heath we've seen. We didn't see the best Kai Green. But I think the, the guys underneath them were pretty impressive. And obviously the 212 was a very fought, uh, closely fought battle. Flex Lewis retaining his title uh, narrowly against Eduardo Correa, who arguably could have unseated him this uh, on this night. Was that a bad decision in your part, on your opinion? You know, it, it's um, it, it's always hard to say what a bad decision is. I mean, it's not like Flex Lewis looked terrible. He looked good. I, I just think that he was not at his he best. He was vulnerable. He was very vulnerable. And, you know, this he's never had to stand next to this type of Eduardo Correa mm. and this type of Jose Raymond. So he was you know, in between a rock and a hard mm. place. I mean, he was not the most ripped. He was not the most dense. He was not the most hardest. So at the end, the, the you know, the the idea put forth is that his balance mm. was better. Is Lonnie, better. Will, uh, will Flex Lewis, you think, stay in the 212 division next year? It's interesting you asked me that. I was just thinking about that because at the Arnold, which they added the 212 this year in place of the women's bodybuilding, he and I were talking uh, backstage and he said in two years he was going to go up to the to the main event, but after seeing this here tonight, do you go up to that to the? I don't know. I I think that one of the problems he's having is that he he has to take like Chris said come down so much in weight that he can't make the weight without sacrificing his physique. Maybe well, I, he'll be better bigger. I mean, you can make that argument, which which seems logical, but at the same time, Eduardo tried to move up. You know, he weighed didn't in, do well, yeah. and, and he didn't do well, so he moved down. Henry's tried it, right. and Henry told Jose, you know, I'm never going to try it again. I mean, he's tried it at a few smaller shows, yeah. and, you know, what happens is Henry gets uh, goes small. up against somebody, not only too small, but just somebody who's like 5'9", mm. 6'1", right. and then, you know, he just kind of looks like the odd mm. guy out. Sure. Well, my, my question is this. If we can envision Lewis at his all-time best, what, maybe last year? How would he have done in the open class tonight? Wouldn't, wouldn't, have, made the, wouldn't have made the top six. No. Wouldn't have, wouldn't made, have made the top six. six. No, no. Absolutely not. Made the top ten? Yes. Would he beat Kuklo? I think he would have made the top six. I think he would have beat... Uh, I think he would have beat Branch Warren at its, well, his look last year. You think he would have, Here. with last year's look, beat, beat Big Grammy, who's seventh? <laughs> yes. It'd be, I would like. I, that's why you know Jerry Scalisi made the comment. I would like to well, see the. Would, would, Lonnie, let me throw something a fantasy uh, call out out there. Wouldn't you love to have seen Flex Lewis against Phil Heath in a final pose down? Not that we needed the show to last any longer, but. Uh, nah, no. Why? What? Just for the hell of it? That wouldn't be exciting. No. Why not? The Flex Lewis here. Yeah. There's there was no comparison. But why wouldn't you? I would love to see the two twelve champ and the open champ pose down at the end. Why not? It doesn't doesn't hurt. It's not. It's, it's well, just the Flex Lewis the of, of it, last of year. Of well, it even to uh, take some pictures the, together. The winner, right? Take some front double, yeah, front last spread. Well, yeah, that'd be okay, I guess, if you yeah, want to go to eleven twenty. <laughs> Congratulations to Nicole Wilkins on her fourth Ms. Figure Olympia win. Uh, for now, though, we are getting very late here at the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, 2014. Lonnie, the official time is 11.16 Pacific time. I'm Dave Palumbo with Chris the Technician Aceto and Lonnie the Swami Teeper for rxmuscle.com.